Thank you very much. Uh, you all know he is filming tonight for the MTV. You gonna help me rip the roof off this place tonight? It's a little something called Mr. Brownstone. I don't know. What by chance the television audience will see. What anyone will see. But what we'll see tonight is that we want to dedicate this song to the people that try to hold you back. The people that tell you how to live. People that tell you how to dress. People that tell you how to talk. People that tell you what you can say and what you can't say. I personally don't need that. I don't need that in my life. Those are the kind of people that get me down. They make me feel like somebody, somebody out there is out to get me. This is what, this is what a good a friend of mine. It gets hassled a lot, because no one believes it's really about her. Now she's having to sign autographs and can't understand that one. But this is for people, if you got something that fills your life, fills the space, but deep down inside you know it ain't right, don't ever give up hope. There's something out there. And all you have to do is just hold on and believe. This is a song called My Michelle. <laughs> Fight, honey, or you're out of the show. Keep fighting. This is getting a lot more fun. I like this. What, what's that? What's that? Wait, the guy in the headband. What do you say? I like that. About five or six years ago, I hitchhiked here and ended up stuck out. In the middle of this place, climbed up out on a, out of the freeway, this little old black man comes up to me and my friend with our backpacks and about 10 bucks between us. And he goes, you know where you are? You in the jungle, baby! You know the game! That's a true story, that ain't no lie. This is take a moment. Introduce the band on the bass guitar. Mr. Duff Rose, the king of beers, McKagan. On the drum, Mr. Steven Popcorn Adler. On the white guitar, over here, been with him for 13 years, it's Mr. Izzy Stradling. And last, but definitely not least, in a world that he did not create, but he would go through it as if it was his own making. Half man, half beast. I'm not sure what it is, whatever, whatever it is, it's weird and it's pissed off and it calls itself Slash. It's a little song called Paradise City. Get some light. Here we go. Okay, people, you guys can spit on each other. Have a good night. It's a little something about how life can feel. This is called The Garden. This is a song sung by Mr. Duff Rose McKegan. It's an old song by a band called The Misfits. 
And this is called Attitude. Are we awake yet? Good. You think you can help me out on this one? This is an old song by a band called Rose Tattoo from Australia. And the help I need is when I say nice boys in the song, you say don't play rock and roll. Think we got that? It's real easy. Let's so should we keep it nice and relaxed? Mellow, do something nice and pretty, or, or, um, or, do you know what the fuck you are? You in the jungle, baby! Wake up! Time to die! I'm gonna dedicate this next song to liars. It's called Double Talking Jive, motherfucker. I'm gonna do something a little different now. We're gonna watch TV. Nah. I'm gonna jerk off. You'd like that over here with your get naked sign, wouldn't you? I'm just gonna jerk off for you. Yeah, 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 I'm looking your balls. <laughs> nice, happy little tune, some whistle in the shower. Oh my god. Dominoes and tits. Ha! I'm gonna introduce the band. On the rhythm guitar, Mr. Gilby Clark. On the bass, Mr. Duff McKagan. On the chair, Mr. Opie. On the keyboard, Mr. Dizzy Reed. On the drums, Mr. Matt Sorm. Good evening, Tokyo. This is the loudest crowd so far here. This is a little bit of Paul McCartney for you. This is something called Live and Let Die. Give me some of that bass thing. This is a song that we wrote about one year before Mr. Brownstone. With the help of our friend West Arkeen and some guy that just, I don't know, his name just escapes me. This is called Bad Obsession, featuring Mr. Teddy Zigzag on the harmonica. This little number sung by Mr. Duff McKegan. Something that we hope to put out on a punk cover album. It's an old song by the Misfits, and this is called Attitude. And we'll dedicate this to Mr. Craig Duswalk. This is the, still the Get In The Ring tour. So, um... Do you know what the fuck you are, Tokyo? So apparently... All you motherfuckers like this really ancient artifact album of ours. So this is something called... We're gonna do a 
cover tune here. We're gonna do a little sing-along type bullshit. Now the words are really, really easy. All it is, and you'll know what time it is, is you say, you know you did, you know you did, you know you did. It's a little something by Paul McCartney and Wings called Live and Let Die. This is something called 14 Years. Featuring Mr. Izzy Stradlin again. This is something by the rest of the band. It's got the name of your beloved motherfucking Highway I-65 in the first verse. All about some guy that gets his brain splattered out on it. This is called Dust and Bone. See that Q95 shirt? I grew up listening to that. That thing that, that station saved my fucking life. I just want to know where's Mike Tennis now, all right? About little Rod Stewart, homie. Hey, suck some dick. I'd like to thank Little Miss TNA, whoever that was. Um, wasn't that lewd and disgusting? Thank you. Hey, I think we got a band somewhere. They're probably just getting high. We should have a... Uh, a record, no wait, no that's two, no wait, that's four records coming out here in the middle of July. Two CDs. And this is my personal little baby from the set. This is something called Estranged. Can I have some water without some fucking bugs in it, please? Thank you. It's a fucking curve. This is a new little ditty featuring Mr. Izzy Stradlin. Titled Dustin Bone. That, that was worth fucking interrupting me for, I guess. No, it wasn't, dude. I'll tell you a little bit about this show. Wait. There might be a delay between different songs because we just have this big fucking list and we pick which song we're going to play next as we go to see how it feels best with you. That way we don't get bored and, and you don't go and I saw that show in Toledo. Fuck that shit. Also, we'll be playing a lot of new stuff, seen as how you people have waited a really long time for the album to come out. And it'd be kind of a really pussiest thing to do to just come up here and play Appetite for Destruction. It's kind of like jerking off. But, we got a, we got a new video out. that people like you have seen to put on number one on request on MTV and the radio stations across the country, which we're real surprised that we never thought it would happen with that song. It's just something we kind of, we recorded that song, we actually wrote it before we recorded the first album. That's why it says bitch slap rap and cocaine tongue on appetite. But uh, we just kind of threw it out there so that the rockers would have something to listen to while we were working on our ballad shit. But, you guys have kind of stuck a firecracker up its ass and it just took off. So without further ado, I meet a lot of people in my profession. You meet a lot of people. And you meet a lot of Guns N' Roses fans and shit and you go, like, how can you talk to me and ask me these questions when you're a Guns N' Roses fan and you've listened to our albums, um, you've listened to us talk, and I know there'll be things in the press that someone else wrote and they'll be twisted and upside down, but I'm just trying to figure out, what is it? I, I must have some huge reputation for lying my ass off all the time. 
I guess that's just it. It's like, basically, if you're talking to Axel, argue with him and don't believe him because he just is known for lying in his music and in his personal life. He just lies all the time, I guess. Is that what he does? I just think it's kind of amazing, you know, that like, you, you talk to people and you go, you mean, you could actually say that to me and you actually listen to a song like Rocket Queen. I, I, I guess, I guess, you know, maybe, maybe Sebastian's right, you know, when he, it's like, and maybe that, maybe I'm like, I'm like one of the Nelsons and I just make shit up. Maybe I just make shit up all the time. Maybe I'm so full of shit that I am nothing but a motherfucking double talking jive motherfucker. This is uh, something new and different. Hey, bitchin', someone broke the piano. That's cute. It better not fall. This is something that a lot of you may already fucking own since it sold about three to five million bootlegs. Impatient motherfuckers. While Slash is finding his shoes, what happened to his shoes anyway? I'm sorry, am I ignoring you? I just, I like these guys' company. Yep, up on a soapbox. How those shoes coming, Slash? I didn't come out here to do stand-up comedy. St. Louis. I'll tell you a little something okay, about okay. the city. Put some shoes on, dude. I was, I was 17, and um, I left Indiana because I had a disagreement with one of the juvenile detectives. And he was determined to put my ass in jail, and I was determined to get the fuck out of Dodge. As he was driving to my house, I was getting my clothes out of the dryer and getting out the fuck out of Dodge. And I had about 35 bucks, and I took a bus to St. Louis. Yeah, that was cool, you know. And I had about a half a joint and I went down by the arch and I smoked half a joint. And then I went out by whatever freeway I was closest to and I hitched a ride with some air conditioning repairman in a van. It all seemed pleasant and safe enough and nothing really much happened. And I was like exhausted, beat, and never been out of my fucking town on my own in my life. And we went to some fucking hotel and I crashed out, you know, and this guy crashed out. And I woke up and this guy was trying to fuck me. I don't care, you can be male, female, you can be a fucking dog. I don't care what you are, man, that shit ain't right. No, but I guess I'm just homophobic, you know, that's my problem. Anyway, it took everything I had inside of me, not... I pinned this guy against the wall between the door of the hotel with my straight razor, because I thought I was bad to shave with a straight razor. And it took everything I had not to fucking slice his jugular vein. And you know that movie, Escape from New York, I guess they filmed a lot of it here or something? So that was kind of, that was kind of my first experiences of knowing where, where I was. Do you know where you are? Do you know where you are? Is this something new? I hear what you're playing. But this is featuring you. This is something new called, is it, wait, 14, queer 14, 14 years, that's That's new. On a rhythm guitar, Mr. Izzy fucking Stratlin. There is a man who leads a life of danger. On the bass guitar, the king of beers, Mr. Duff Rose, my fucking king in. On the Budweiser can and the piano, 
Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dizzy Reed. And on the drums, this guy. Our USS GNR battleship, our destroyer, our tank, our gunrunner, our mercenary from hell, our concrete fucking underpants fucking wearing drummer, to show you why he is in this fucking band. Well, thanks to the lame ass security, I'm going home. We have some really fucking stupid people here tonight. Hay alguna gente estúpida esta noche. Who think that throwing things at the stage will relate into a better show. Si ustedes siguen tirando cosas, no podremos hacer un show bueno. It won't happen that way. No podrá ser así. Because we will fucking go home. Porque nos vamos a ir a casa. Don't try me. No, no lo hagan. Now shall we continue or shall we go home? Podemos. I'd like to dedicate this next song to those who try to control and manipulate you. Be those the powers that be, the government, your family, your friends, or anything else that chooses to fuck with you. You can even talk to some of these people. You can try to be friends. You can try to work it out. But, uh, you can't save nobody else. You'll be lucky if you can save your own ass. But we'll dedicate this to these people. This is called Live and Let Die. This is a song sung by Mr. Duff Rose McKickian. This is by the Misfits and this is called Attitude. Mr. Teddy! This next song features Mr. Teddy, Zigzag, Big Bag, Andreatis, the Greek on the harmonica. And features the Goyles, the 976 horn section. And Mr. Slash on the Travis Bean. Never mind, we're gonna play something, so I don't know. I'd like to dedicate this next song to a man who likes to play games. To a man that lives his life playing games, premeditated games. A man who's so empty that that's all he can do is play fucking games. A man who's a parasite. A man who makes, who lives his life on sucking off other people's life force and their energy. An old man who likes to live vicariously through young people and suck up all their life because he has none of his own. I'd like to dedicate this song to a cheap punk named Warren Beatty. A man who has a family and a baby, but he's got to spend his time fucking around with other people because he doesn't know what to do with his own life. A man who uses you, uses the media, and uses everybody to to, to fulfill his fucking parasitic needs. Well, listen, home fuck. If you think Madonna kicked your ass, I'm betting my money on a net, you stupid fucking asshole. This is a song called Double Talking Jive, motherfucker. First things first, we're sorry to announce that Jeff Beck won't be here with us tonight. At the last minute, he wasn't feeling well and had to fly back to London, so we wish him all the best. And maybe we'll do it again next time. In the meantime, how about a little bit of Arnold? You could be mine! Please, please. On the rhythm guitar! I'm going to introduce the band. This is Mr. Gilby Clark. Yeah. 
On the bass guitar, the one, the only, and here to stay, the king of beers, Mr. Duff Rose McKegnian. <laughs> On the keyboards, Mr. Dizzy, if I fall down, I'm all right, Reed. <laughs> and here to... Here to beat your bone apart is Mr. Matt Sorum on the drums. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Slash. <laughs> We're gonna like to introduce some special guests we have tonight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Steven Tyler and Joe Perry of Paris. <laughs> Did I hear someone say the word bitch? Any of you uh, read the latest Rolling Stone? I was on the phone for a long time last night. And a friend of mine, a friend of mine was telling me how Shut the fuck up. Yo, Axel, cool metal, dude. Rock and roll party. Do cocaine, yeah. I ain't here for that. Anyway, there was a friend of mine who was telling me how, how some of the members of my family and some of the friends of my family have taken a great offense at what I said in this magazine. It's a shame what, look what he's done to his mother. His mother can't even go out of the house now. It was amazing my mother could have gone out of the house before knowing the shit she fucking knew. And why is he talking about this? Because it might not have happened to you, but it might have happened to the two or three people that are standing around you who got some fucked up family life that's gonna come back to haunt them when they hit about the age of 25. And then you gotta find your way, trying to climb your way out of what you thought was your life, but it looks more in your head like a fucking car wreck that no one told you about. Because the family doesn't want to be embarrassed by these things coming out. We just don't want to have to deal with this, and we shouldn't have to deal with this publicly. But if we don't deal with it publicly, then we're probably not gonna deal with the bullshit at all. And I'll bet they like it that way. I'm not a qualified therapist. I don't know a lot of shit about this, but I do know that we're in the 90s. And I do know that if we're gonna make it for another 50 years on this planet, we gotta fucking change our shit now. And there's a lot of motherfuckers that don't want that shit to be changed because that's gonna dig up their crap. There's a lot of parents who done fucked up their kids through their whole fucking lives and they're about, they're about 40, they're about 50 and they think it's cool. Fuck that shit. And I'm the last motherfucking person they thought would be climbing up their ass to tell them about it. But see, for me now, it ain't about fucking doing cocaine. It ain't about how much vodka can I drink and how much I can drink someone else under the table. It ain't about what a fucking macho man rock and roller I can be. That shit don't work no more. That's great for little kid rock and roll fucking bullshit, but it don't work no more in the real world for my ass. I can't come up here and go, yeah, I'm bad, I'm rock and roll, we're doing this rock and roll thing. If my life is falling apart, I can't fake it no more. And just because my family or my record company or somebody else tells me I should so everybody can be happy and make money and rock, yeah, suck my dick. Anyway, there are those in my family who are 
They, they plan now that, now that I've written these things, that they're gonna get revenge because it was a terrible thing I did and we're gonna get revenge. Yeah, try it. And if a fucking scrawny little high, junior high 90 pound weakling can finally get his ass up here and take this shit on, so can any one of you that have the same fucking bullshit problems in your life. They don't have to get away with it. I tried being nice. I tried being cool about it. I tried like being friends and offering forgiveness and love and all that kind of shit. All I got was, you know how much we love you, but let's keep the screws on and keep you down like we always have. Yeah, well, guess what? I changed my point of view. For me now, it's kind of like live and let die, motherfucker. I said, do you believe all the shit you read? Do you ever wonder why you're given so much shit to read? You're given a lot of shit to read because there's a lot of fucking people out there who uh, I don't think I should even give them the credit to say that they're very conscious of that which they are doing. But it's mainly because they don't want things like this concert here in Oklahoma to fucking happen. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of people who don't know why they do things. But some of the reasons behind that, are they don't want the people like you that are here tonight to see some little loudmouth fucker like me who crawled out of some shithole somewhere and worked his way up onto this stage. They don't want, there's something out there that doesn't want people like you to realize that you can do whatever the fuck you want with your goddamn life. And unless there are those that unless they got a piece of the pie, unless they got a piece of your ass, Unless they got a piece of your life, they just don't want it to happen. You do it their way or you don't do it. And they can suck my dick. I believe that deep inside everybody, there's something inside you that knows what the fuck it is you're supposed to do with your life. And no matter what anybody tells you, if you keep looking and you keep digging, you're going to find it. And you can be the person you're fucking meant to be on this goddamn planet. And don't let anybody, anybody ever get in your way. Including me. Unless somebody wants to pay my hospital bills, don't ever do that shit with the piano and the ramps and the shit again when I'm paying for the other thing. We got one more song, people. I'm sorry if I'm a puss. I just fucking have to jump around that thing in this goddamn cast and it ain't too fucking pleasant. What was that, home? Hey, come a little closer. What's that? to approach the situation because I'm not quite sure how I feel about the situation except for pretty fucked. I'm going to point a finger at individuals or say that I was totally right. But I feel very fortunate to be here to be able to do this show because Upon arriving in the parking lot about 45 minutes ago, some of you were here during that. I got into it with the parking security, and they called all their buddies, the rest of the parking security, 
So there's me and my brother against like these 15 guys who are basically a bunch of assholes. But the reason I'm pissed off is to see all we were trying to do was get the car in so we could come here and do a show for you. Now what happened was, is this fucking cop in a four-wheel drive, whatever, pulls up and he don't know what the hell's going on. He just pulls up with his lights going, jumps out of his car, sees this dude with long hair in the middle of these guys and grabs me and throws me over a rail. Okay? I ain't crying about that. What I'm crying about is, man, how do you know that the kid with the long hair is the one who was wrong, man? How can he fucking tell? How did he know? He just bit me because that's what he does. You know, it's like, oh, the guy with the beer in his hand, he's the one causing the trouble. How's, you know, and, and the best quote out of this is when this guy goes, fuck your civil rights, I'm the law. Luckily, we got out of this bullshit. And I'm gonna end this story so you don't have to hear me fucking talk all night. But anyway, it's assholes and things like this that give us like the majority of the fucking problems that we fucking have. So we're gonna dedicate this next song to that little altercation in the parking lot. And and to his quote, gee, you really are the lead singer. There's a fucking song called Out to Get Me for an Asshole. You know, I used to, to go on the internet. Eu costumava uh, entrar na internet. But the internet seems to be. Mas a internet parece ser. Like a big garbage can. Uma grande lata de lixo. You know, it never ceases to amaze me. When you uh, when you're up here and you you look out over the crowd and you can always find these like I don't know they're usually in between about I think between 18 to 25 and they're these they're these real pot smoking rock and roll judgmental fuckheads. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I'm cool and shit. I'm standing here. I'm cool, but. I don't know. I don't know who those Guns N' Roses guys think they are, man. They think they're cool and shit, man. You know, I'm cool. I don't know, man. It ain't about me being cool. It ain't about you being cool. But I think what we're all doing here tonight is pretty fucking cool, don't you? So if you came here to be a critical, judgmental fuck. You know, I guess that's your problem if you want to stand there like you're James Dean with a fucking cob up your ass against the wall, that's cool. Seems to me that you're wasting your own goddamn time though. And that's another problem. We all think we have so much fucking time. We ain't got no goddamn time. We ain't got no time to waste at all. You wanna sit on your ass and think you're cool? You'll end up working in a fucking factory till you're fucking 80 years old and then they'll rip you off for your fucking pension. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'll get off my soapbox. I just, you know, I was singing that song and there was a couple of these people going, yeah, fuck that shit. But I do know for a fact that you, you know, maybe you just stoned because you get some good pot back here. But this is a wake up call. Cause you know what the fuck you are? Stage. But I've tried every other fucking way. And unless certain people in this band get their shit together, 
These will be the last Guns N' Roses shows you'll fucking ever see. Because I'm tired of too many people in this organization dancing with Mr. Goddamn Brownstone. And it's called Double Tommy Chai Motherfucker. 